Hi, I'm Lynette and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you a tutorial on this look right here using the Ace Boutte Blossom Passion Palette. Now, this is one of four in an eyeshadow bundle that uh, Ace Boutte released, I want to say last summer because I believe that's when I purchased it. So there are four palettes in the bundle. You can buy them individually. And I have now used three of the four palettes. And I have to say my love affair with these eyeshadow palettes continues. <laughs> I continue to be impressed by the pigmentation and the blendability, but mainly the pigmentation of these eyeshadows. This is what the Blossom Passion Palette looks like, which I'm sure you've seen by now because these palettes are old at this point. And it's just all of these palettes, I have to say, I just like to open them. They're so beautiful. I think the color stories are so beautiful. I like to open them and just look at them. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so I did tutorials, which I will link up here. I'll link, I'll link the playlist um, for the tutorials that I did with the other two palettes. I intended to do something completely different today and things got started and just I took a right turn maybe a left turn and I ended up here <laughs> ended up using the revolution cut crease canvas which is um, one of the products that you saw in my mini Ulta haul and I can count the number of times I've done cut creases on my channel on one hand because they're very difficult for me because I have a fold really prominent fold um, in each of my eyelids and there's no telling where the fold is going to be during throughout the course of the day throughout the, the minute of the day <laughs> so doing a cut crease is really not something I like to do but I attempted it today and I mean I, th I think it went okay I made some mistakes um, <laughs> That's why this video should be subtitled Cut Crease What Not To Do. Um, so I made some mistakes, but at the end of the day, um, I think it all worked out. And I just want to point out some, uh, just a couple of shadows in here that really just really blew me away. <laughs> this shadow here, Seduction, it looks black in the pan and I actually thought let me roll up my sleeves come on I'm about to do some swatching I thought up until today I never swatched it up until today I thought up until today that the the eyeshadow is black because it to me looks black in the pan but it's so not black it's like <gasps> it's like this deep deep burgundy wine brown it is and do you see I mean look look at this pigmentation ah uh, freaking amazing and then this eyeshadow here which is I mean there's so many of them just from the looks of them I love this red here is really red and then this shade here lust is this another nice burgundy reddish shade oh my goodness I don't know if the camera is doing them justice but this red here is so freaking bright and it's what I'm I'm wearing it's one of the shades I'm wearing today uh, it kind of got lost in the pink because I end up I ended up swatching these two shades right here love and beauty and this one beauty it let me just wipe off let me get a, a wipe here and wipe off my um, hands I I totally expect these eyeshadows to stain um, because they kind of stained my fingers when I was swatching them and I still have a little bit of a stain here from one of the swatches so you know just expect 
I expect. So you should expect that, you know, these shadows will probably stay in your lids. But these two right here, Beauty, which is, I don't know, it's, it looks like a matte, it, I think it's a, it's a satin shade because it does have a little, a little shimmer to it once I actually applied it, once I swatched it and applied it to my skin. And this shade here, love this beautiful, bright oh, pink. I mean, just gorgeous. And these are the two shades that I'm wearing um, here in the front of my eye. And I have to say though, look at this. Look, will you look at, do you see, do you see this? Just so buttery smooth and so bright. Oh, oh, oh. oh after I swatched it, I had to use it. Um, look, look at this. So I have to, I do have to say though, once I put it on my eyes, I put them right next to each other and I really, I really can't see any difference between the two shadows once I applied them on my eyes. So that's a little, you know, they're, they're kind of similar. One's a little bit brighter. I still have one more to use and that's the really colorful rainbow one, Slice of Paradise. And that's in the blue packaging. And this is what it looks like. I have to tell you, of all four of the palettes, this one is, I find, the most, the least interesting and the least inspiring to me. It, when I look at it, I don't immediately feel excited about a look. Maybe because I bought so many rainbow palettes and bright eyeshadow palettes last summer and spring and did quite a few colorful looks that, you know, this one here is just kind of like, Mm, you know, okay, yeah, been there, done that. But I'm looking forward, of course, to using this palette too, and I will be using it. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a tutorial with this palette. But yeah, so far, I'm, I'm really loving them. They are a bit expensive. They are expensive. I think they're like $38 each for the palette. And then I got the bundle on sale. Um, I forget how much the bundle is full price. So, I mean, they're not cheap shadows. And um, so it's a good thing that they do work very well. And when I look at these palettes, I really do feel inspired and excited to use them and to create a look with them. So I hope that you like the look that I created with this one today. And if you'd like to see how I created this look using my Ace Boutte Blossom Passion palette, then keep on watching. Starting off with the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in the shade C1. And I'm just blending that all over my lid. This is what I'm going to use to prime my eye for shadow. I did not set it. And I'm going in with Gardenia and a Sigma E40 brush. And this is going to serve as my underbrow highlight. And I went back into the palette many, many times to build up this shade so that you could see it on my skin. Now going in with Red Rose and a NYX number 16 blending brush. And I'm going to stamp that into my crease because I want to make sure I get maximum payoff with this very, look at that, pigmentation. <laughs> that is a red eyeshadow, y'all. And I'm just stamping it into the crease. And now I'm going to blend it out using back and forth motions. And as you can see, as I'm blending it up, it's blending up into that first shadow that we laid down. And it is creating a nice gradient um, from the crease up to under the brow. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to you might want to start off with a lighter shade to begin with, because then when you start blending that darker shade up, it will blend into it and blend out nicely and create a nice little gradient. And I went back into the palette multiple times because I just wanted to build up this red but as you can see it was very pigmented already and then back in with that original shade just to blend out the those edges and also because our some of that white was showing through from the primer now i'm going in with lust and 
a Delium Tools. This is probably a 776 blending brush. And I'm placing that into the crease. And it's really like the same shade as the Red Rose, only deeper and darker. So I want to continue on with creating that gradient. And I went back into the palette multiple times too with this shadow. But as you can see, it's pigmented from Go. Now I'm going in with Seduction and a NYX, I'm sorry, a Sonia Kashuk blending brush. And I'm going to stamp that yet again, this time on my outer V area and partway onto my eyelid. And as you can see, look how dark and deep it's that shade. And it really took onto the lid where I still had that um, concealer. But stamping it on top of those deep red shades, it really took some building up. And I went in numerous times probably more than i needed to because i wanted to make sure i was able to deepen up that outer v area and get it to show get it to adhere over that those red shades and then i went back in with that previous red shade to make sure i blended out that dark dark shadow because again you just want to have a nice smooth gradient where you don't see where one shadow ends and the other begins. Now this is the Revolution Cut Crease Canvas and this is in the shade Halo which is white and I'm going to put that down. I decided to cut the crease because my lid was so dark from those dark red deep brown shade that I was concerned that the lid shadow was not was not going to show up. So I thought about removing it with makeup remover, but then I thought that's just going to be too complicated and I already suck at this. So <laughs> I decided to just go in with the, um, the cut crease canvas and I wanted to try it. And this is an old, old Sonia Kashuk brush, which was too big. So um, you might want to use a smaller brush when you're doing this very detailed work because you want to make sure that line there in the crease is really crisp and smooth and mine isn't. Now I'm going in with the shade Beauty and this is a really small, I believe it's a Sephora brush. The brush I should have been using to cut the crease with because I could be more precise with the smaller brush. And this Beauty shade is like a satin shade it looks matte in the pan but then when you swatch it it's got a little shimmer to it so i placed that on much of the lid on the mobile eyelid and i kept going in because i wanted to build it up i made the mistake uh, of letting the ca cut canvas by the time i got to this shade that cut canvas had already pretty much dried up <laughs> So it took a lot of building up to get that shade onto the lid. And now I'm going in with Love. And it's also a, a like fiery fuchsia pink shade. But you'll see it's kind of patchy because I had let that canvas pretty much dry. It was no longer tacky by the time I got around to putting these shadows on. So please, y'all, when you do your cut canvases, don't let them dry down all the way. Make sure they're still tacky. Going in with that deep shade now just to blend it into those pinks. And now I'm just cleaning up the fallout, which when using really pigmented shadows like this, there wasn't as much fallout as, you know, one might expect. And now I'm taking my LA Girl. Nope, that's wrong. I'm taking a black liner. What is this? The Revlon Photo Ready Kajal Liner. And then back in with Red Rose. And I'm going to blend that under on my lower lash line. And I decided to go all the way across with it. I wasn't going to. And I was like, yeah, why not? And that's a Makeup Geek pencil brush. But of course, back in with Lust. And I'm going to blend this over um, that red rose. And because I wanted it to be pretty dark on my lower lash line. And I'm taking that all the way across as well, except for right there in that little space in the inner corner where I'm going to take Peony Wet. And I'm going to use that same pencil brush and place that in my inner corner to serve as my highlight. 
This is the finished look. I used the Ingla Gel Eyeliner. No wing today. <laughs> and my Kiss Faux Mink Lashes in the Style Boudoir. Okay, so that is the look. Um, I like how it came out. How it came out. <laughs> I like how the look came out. I am just living for this pink eyeshadow. Oh my God. So vibrant, so beautiful. And I'm sure the cut canvas had something, you know, probably had a little bit to do with it, but these shades even just swatched on my skin are bright and beautiful and gorgeous. I like this. Um, I didn't use the brush because I just, and, and I didn't want to get eyeshadow pink in, in here. So I doubt I'll be using the brush. I'll probably always use my own brush to apply this, but I do like it. I think it was easy to use, as easy as cutting the crease can be on my eyelids with massive folds in them. But um, I think it was, it, it was a nice amount of tackiness to it. It doesn't dry down super fast, which is a good thing because it gives you time to manipulate it and move it around and spread it out and blend it out where you want it to go. And then it does stay tacky, but I did really wait way too long. I let the damn thing dry before I finally got around to putting the shadow on it. So don't do that. But if you let it stay a little tacky before it dries all the way down, I think it's going to work beautifully for cut creases. I'm looking, I'm not looking forward to doing any more cut creases. I, I was about to lie and say I'm looking. <laughs> but um, I can certainly see myself using this as an eyeshadow base for bright um, colored eyeshadows this spring and summer and I don't know who knows I might even invest they have a, a few more shades of this in more like beige tones so who knows maybe I'll get another one you will see this again going forward in the near future I'm sure if you liked this video then please give it a like and consider subscribing because I do tutorials, swatches, hauls, and reviews here on my channel every Saturday. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you again next week. Until then, bye bye